Hello everybody, so I'm uh, Dr. Pan Yan from uh, Vietnam. I work at the uh, Biotechnology Center of Ho Chi Minh City. And uh, today I promise that I will have the simplest presentation for you. No need to think so much. <laughs> okay, so uh, our center, I will introduce a bit about our center because it's a new center in uh, the South of Vietnam in Ho Chi Minh City. And, uh, it the project to build uh, the center from Roman. So uh, we have the total invest is about 100 million USD to build a new one for biotechnology. And uh, we want uh, that we could do something to develop biotechnologies um, in Vietnam, especially for the south of Vietnam. So we have so many things to do. And um, for example, we uh, do some activities. Uh, transfer what we have done for other companies and for farmers or whatever in the South Vietnam. Uh, we learn from our institutes, uh, new techniques, and then we transfer them in our center. And uh, sometimes we also do some training works. And um, it's very special because in our um, center, we have a place for pilot production. Uh, as you say, uh, as you know, we, for example, we isolate microorganisms uh, we put it in a collection and we don't know what to do next with this uh, microorganism, right? So we try to make a small plate uh, to use this microorganism to make it more useful in life. And uh, after that, uh, those uh, microorganisms are uh, useful uh, and we see they have great potential. So we try to uh, commercialize them in the way we do. Uh, so it's is the website of uh, the uh, Ho Chi Minh Biotech Collection of Magnesium. We call it uh, FBCM. And uh, actually, uh, how to say, uh, in Vietnam, we have a collection called v, uh, VTCC, Vietnam Thai Culture Collection. So actually, uh, that collection will cover all areas in Vietnam. When we have new uh, magnesium, for example, we send to them. But in the south of Vietnam, we don't have any collections. And uh, it's very pretty uh, because there are a lot of institutes and research centers in Vietnam. And um, later you will see that we have a very uh, nice places in the south of Vietnam where we have huge bioresources. resources. So we also have and want to make uh, our own collection and a small collection for other institutes allow us to send uh, and to preserve the uh, microorganisms. It's the reason why we open such a small collection and we call it a local uh, collection of magnesium. So, uh, so in our mind, uh, what you do with this collection of magnesium? We will have three steps uh, for developing. The first step is that we need a collection for ourselves uh, at last, uh, so that we collect some magnesium which we have great potential to use, not to uh, preservation only. Uh, and second, so we have other institute, research center, and other companies uh, around us if they want to preserve the uh, magnesium so they can come to us. Uh, and next one, we uh, want other knows about their information so that they can co contact each other. Uh, but it should be very easy to use. Uh, so, uh, for example, if a, a company wants to buy some uh, magnesium, some materials, for example, they can go to our website uh, to check for the information. And the information should be very detailed for them to decide which one they want to contact. And maybe that magnesium won't be safe, uh, won't be preserved at our collection. But in uh, companies' places or in a research uh, center uh, places. But anyway, they will know the information first. It's, it's the problem right now in Vietnam that we have some potential strength, but we don't know who needs it. And uh, also the same problem with other institutes. Where they need something, they don't know where to call. Uh, surely they can call BTCC, but uh, BTCC just keep on. So they don't know detail about the information of these friends. So it's the reason. So first I will talk about the, uh, the 
the second step and the third step, it means that helping others keep their uh, resources and connect for many history because uh, it's before others first. So, uh, so for helping others to keep their uh, resources, so we think like that. We think like uh, we, if they have a strength, potential strength, they know exactly that is potential. So what they can do, they can call us and they can repeat themselves or provide online about their strength. For example, uh, later I will give the profile form uh, with a bit more details. Uh, and uh, um, by this registration process, uh, they will have an account and uh, the information if they want to update on uh, our website, uh, there will be information about it. And uh, they can choose, they can choose. L1 is made that they just uh, preserve their strength in our collection and no one will know about it. Or L2 is mean that we can transfer uh, the strength for them, but for research only. And the next one, L3, it means that the information will be updated on the internet and other people also know about the information and they can come for commercializing. Uh, and uh, after fulfilling the registration form, so they will send the strength to us and uh, we will check information, check quality, DNA sequence, and then we, we will feedback for the owner that they can say or preserve the strength in our condition or not. And actually, uh, in this uh, step, I think it's very important to know who is the owner, who is the owner of the microorganisms. It, it's very complicated. Uh, so we make a, a simple thing like that. This is how the website looks like with a lot of fields which you have to fill in. And if you are not the owner of magnesium, I really think that you feel hated to fill the information. Why? Because uh, you will have to fill some information like you have your photo uh, and of them. You, you need to send, to send out the gene, gene, gene sequencing. You have to send out some information about your research about it, like enzyme activity uh, and uh, some more uh, information. And we don't update the information on the internet. But you have to fill them if you want us to preserve, to preserve your uh, samples. So in the way, and uh, another thing uh, I want to say that in this form, we require them to add GPS of the blade where they isolated the string. Uh, it's a bit complicated, I understand about it. Uh, if they don't want to add the GPS a place of where they isolated the string, so they can add the address, but detail address of the blade where they isolated. Uh, it, it, it right now is a way for us to control a bit about the origin of the mechanism. Uh, and uh, for Connecting for beneficiary. So as I said, a lot of people don't want to send the strength to uh, other um, collections because they are worried that okay, maybe they will use for a purpose, or uh, maybe they can do whatever with the strength and they don't know. So they just want to save the strength at their places, but they also want others to know about the strength. So they also want to keep information, but. Uh, it's a bit like a graph or um, you know, Uber, right? You have your own motorcycle. You keep it in the motorcycle. What you need information about your motorcycle or about you on the internet, and other people can contact you directly very fast. So in the way you think, uh, and we also try to, to do the same way. It's mean way we make a platform for them to feel all information about the strength which they are trying to preserve. And uh, when uh, someone wants to know more information about our strain, so we will have, they have to contact us and we will try to contact with the owner. And then we make them contact together. So it can wait. Uh, now I, come, uh, I will come back to the first uh, step. It means building our own collection of mechanisms. So 
it's a very small conditional mechanism, I agree. And um, what we do, we just we try to isolate uh, mechanism which can be used in first in agriculture, second for finding a solution for this uh, planet, like uh, environment treatment, for example. And we have just uh, some proposed like that. So up to now, we uh, isolated uh, more than about 450 species uh, strains and uh, about 100 species. But the more important things A, uh, for example, one strain here is from a collection of uh, 200 or 300 same strains. Uh, for example, we did a research and we isolated about 200 strains of uh, bacillus species. So we will collect about 10 in this collection, not more. Why not more? Because we are not a national collection. We just want to keep what can be used. It is the reason why we just keep very small number of species and strengths. So up to now, we have full information about 127 strong microorganisms, which we can, I think we can use for uh, biofertilizer uh, or some other product like nitrogen fixings uh, or other kind. And uh, I also want to tell about uh, the local collection of uh, microorganisms for South Vietnam, here the South Vietnam. And uh, if you see so uh, the small green one the, over there is Ho Chi Minh City. So around Ho Chi Minh City, there are about 14 national parks. And uh, a lot of new microorganisms with uh, uh, published on the internet are from the national parks. So we also come to the national parks and we also try to isolate some new uh, microorganisms from here. And here are some pictures of the national parks. Very beautiful in the there. And uh, they are totally different to each other. Okay. Uh, so after uh, after isolation of the strains, uh, we we just uh, divide that we would uh, divide them into two groups. The first group is uh, I call it well known mechanism. They are uh, some mechanisms which are usually used in agriculture, for example, and uh, they are accepted by the government to use. And uh, so we will collect a uh, um, well potential question of these friends, but I don't know what it, another one is unknown ones. Unknown is mean that, okay, we can identify two uh, species, but we don't have much information on the internet about how to use. But we ourselves see that they have a lot of potential. Uh, for example, also about bacillus. Can I? No. What did I do? Oh, no. Uh, it's a bit hard to you. <laughs> but for example, ah, it's behind. Okay. For example, this one. We know all about bacillus, right? But bacillus uh, are a part that it, it's very potential strain because it has gray uh, chitinase, proteasa, uh, and some um, activities. A lot of uh, research uh, which we did in our center, we saw that. But we don't know how to use because anyway, you have to go through a lot of step uh, for Determine that they are safe for for using, for example, uh, this guy of <coughs> as a one bacillus lexis as a one. Uh, this is a new one uh, which has only in Vietnam, but it's mostly not uh, a terror. For example, so we divided it into unknown group, and we are trying to continue to develop our commercial products for them. So here are some byproducts uh, with up on this collection. For example, we can do um, 
map, this one. This one is also uh, on the market and a lot of farmers like them very much. And uh, they, uh, they are just a mix of uh, decoded mines. So this, this is uh, how we have this. This is a uh, Vietnamese species. Really better than nitrogen. Uh, it has great uh, potential for nitrogen fishing and phosphate synthesizing. And we call this product uh, Biolanda. Okay, and so other products, for example. And uh, the last one that I want to tell before I start it is for our planet, as I said. So, uh, this is Comoragatri by Tanata Colab. And uh, from this strain, we make a bacterial cellulose. Maybe some of you have known about Natari Coco, right? It is very famous in Philippines, is it? Yes. But from this strain, we make bacterial cellulose, and after that, we make something like wax or paper or a lot of other things which is totally biodegradable. Uh, and I have some here. I don't know how to call it, <laughs> but I have some species, so anyone uh, who is interested in can come and ask me for this one. Thank you very much for listening.